here I am. This was, uh, this was fall of 1985. 1985. How many of you were born before 1985? A few of you here, a couple. I see some of you. None of you were born then. First year Bible school. As you can tell, I was uh, more interested in football. This was Leaf Day. The first year guys played football against the upperclassmen. It was a brutal war. But just look at the promise and the potential. <laughs> How many can feel the anointing coming off them? Man of God, right there, you look at that. I want you to know I still have it. I'll drop any one of you right now. <laughs> growing, up, I was, uh, growing up, I was a decent student. I, I wasn't much of an academic in school, wasn't really interested in school. However, I have always liked books. I have every Bible that is, was ever given to me or that I've ever purchased. And tonight, I brought with me my Bible school Bible. This is my Bible school Bible. Uh, 1987, it was, this was my second year of Bible school, 85, 86, and 86, 87. Um, it still has a picture taped on the inside cover, I can show you afterward, of my, my Bible school sweetheart. And she's here tonight. And I honor my family. <laughs> she still makes my heart pitter patter. <clears throat> In fact, we're going to drive home tonight. I'm going to hold hands with her. Now, you're not allowed to do that yet. Uh, picked her out on day four. It's a truth. <clears throat> I'm just going to be honest and real with you tonight. She walked by. I said, yep, that's it. That's the one right there. Day four. Held the door open for her. And... Uh, and the Lord spoke to my heart, and th th there it is. <clears throat> I'll tell you something else I have in my Bible, and it is just uncanny, Brother Tracy, that you're in this service tonight, and I honor you and your wife. <clears throat> On the second page of my ABI Bible, I have some notes taped on the second cover page from Brother Tracy ministering, and I had no idea you were going to be here tonight. And uh, I asked Brother Long, I said, is your father-in-law going to be here? And he said, I, I think. And uh, he came to ABI, it must have been in 86 or 87, and he preached to the student body, ministering in the power of the Spirit. And we had lots of preachers come by ABI and preach to us, but I didn't tape their notes in my Bible. So something impacted me from what you said. You said, you said things like Pakistan means holy land. Uh, you, uh, you said seek not the blessings and signs and wonders. You said seek the Savior, not the gifts, but the giver. And I mean, he laid it out. He told us in 1986 or 87, it's not your ability but it's your availability. He told us the kingdom of God is within you. He laid it out. And the notes stopped there. I don't know if he got done or I got slain out or what. <laughs> I, have a, I have a few books on my desk that go back uh, to when I was in grade five. I... I, I, I not much of an academic, like I say, but I, I like books. Uh, I've got some favorites on my desk, something for Joey. I, I have The Scarlet Letter. It's a fictional work by Nathaniel Hawthorne. 
I have uh, Where the Red Fern Grows. In 1984, my junior of high school, our English lit teacher, assigned our class to read George Orwell's 1984. Boy, are we ever living in that prophetic hour. When I was 17, my dad gave me Og Mandino's book, The Greatest Salesman in the World. When I was in high school, I joined the Book of the Month Club, and as part of that introductory offer of 12 free books, I, I probably still owe them money, <clears throat> I selected a book called In Search of Excellence. In Search of Excellence. <clears throat> this book identified and described what successful companies were doing that less successful companies were not doing. And why at the age of 16 or 17... I picked that book out. It's beyond me. I, I wasn't much interested in management or leadership, but the title of that book has never left my spirit in search of excellence. It has always been my conviction that God's people, I, uh, I'm starting to feel something stir in my spirit right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It has always been my conviction that God's people ought to exercise political, social, and spiritual influence in our world as long as it brings glory to God and has an end goal of saving souls. It's not about our kingdom and about our deal but it is about me saying, Lord, I'm here. Use me. I give my heart and my life and my soul. I dedicate myself to you. Lord, bring glory to your name. Hallelujah. And if you can reach a soul, then God, use me or use your people to let it happen. I've always been amazed that Joseph had influence with Pharaoh. I've always been amazed that Daniel and the Hebrew boys had influence with Nebuchadnezzar. I have thought what it must be like to influence a world leader to declare that God is the only God. He's the mighty God. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've always been in awe that Esther could walk into the throne room and, and influence the king. It has always amazed me that prophets of old were sought out by kings and queens for a word from God. I am forever impressed that Paul could introduce an unknown God to some of the greatest minds and possibly hold court with Caesar himself. It seems to me that spirit-filled believers should be those that influence the preaching, the worship, the policy, the attitude. It ought to be that we're leading the charge in this untoward, this untoward generation. I was, uh, it, it was testified in the word of the Lord that Paul and Silas turned the world upside down with this gospel. I think it should be that young men and women of God, uh, much like Brother Stone King did before the United Nations, I think there ought to be an anointing. There ought to be something that rests on you that God starts right now taking you from a gruff old football player to turn you into a man and a woman of God that can stand in the highest platforms and the largest realms and influence people for the kingdom. I believe there ought to be spirit-filled believers in throne rooms, courtrooms, legislative assemblies, classrooms, surgical suites, in every discipline and trade. This isn't wild dreaming. There is biblical precedence for what I'm saying. Proverbs said, do you see a man who excels? He will stand before kings. And I'm hoping I'm hoping by the power of God and the anointing of the Spirit to breathe something into you that's going to compel you and excel you to an excellency in your, in your life. I'm not talking about prestige and power and wealth. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about an excellency in the calling of God that's going to be nurtured in your Bible school experience. So with that intention with that in mind my intention is to declare over you uh, a spirit or a search for excellency 
I want to speak God's favor, anointing, protection, and grace over the leadership, the faculty, the staff, and the student body. I'm going to speak into our spirits a passion for a search for excellency. Will Durant, a historian and philosopher, borrowed from Aristotle and formulated the following thought. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellent, then, is not an act, but it is a habit. And so the first thing that I want to put in your spirit <clears throat> this evening is a search for excellency in learning. The manifest function of college is to lay a foundation, develop skills. I would like to think that you're going to remember what I say, but I know that you're not. <laughs> but I am going to breathe something into you, the help of God, if I have to keep you here all night. I'm going to breathe something in you, uh, passion, passion. You go to college, and yes, you learn some things, but what you really learn in college is you learn how to learn. That certificate tells the world you've developed skills for learning, not necessarily what you've learned, but it tells the world you've learned discipline and habits and vision and goal and social skills and that you've got a no-quit attitude. I don't want any quitters. I want young people that have a vision and a search for knowledge that is hungry, and they say, come, come, come. Come whatever, come what may, I started on this journey. I'm going to see it through. I'm going to have something developed. I'm going to have a, an excellency for learning in my heart. It's going to require late nights. It's going to require uh, isolation. It's going to require an attitude that says, I, I cannot, others may, but I got to go to the room. I got to find a place to pray. I got to go to the prayer room. I got to go to the chapel. Yeah, I'd like to go to Tim Hortons, but I got homework to do. My daughter, she's here tonight. She's earned and has accomplished some things academically. It sort of irritates her when people say, you're so smart. To which she says, I'm not smart. I just worked hard. I put the time in. And while others are sleeping and, and uh, uh, sleeping in or they're out running around, she was sitting in her brown chair at 5 a.m. And later after working all day, pounding out papers at 2 a.m., People say to my wife, oh, it just, it's just so natural for you to play the piano. She wasn't born that way. <sighs> it started at the age of five with notes, and then scales, and then chords, and teachers wrapping her knuckles with rulers. It involved being told you're wrong. And that's wrong to do that in 2021 because everybody's always right. No, sometimes you're wrong. You got to deal with it. I'm not mad, really, I'm not. Excellency in learning. Excellency is learning. It's picking yourself up after falling short, taking responsibility. I have had some of the most dreadful professors in my life. One professor walked in and sat down and read his le lecture notes monotone for three hours. Not two hours and 59 minutes. I'm talking 180 minutes. I was slapping my face and biting my tongue and pinching my fingers. I'm going to stay awake. But something got in my spirit. I said, I said, everybody can't stand this professor, but I'm going to get an A in his class. And, and I worked and I sat there and my eyeballs would go cross and I would stare into the wall and the wall would go real deep. But I, and I worked and, and at the end of it, he gave me an A minus. And I went in and sat down and said, what did I do wrong? He said, nothing. Your work was beyond exceptional. I just don't give A's. <laughs> one, one professor came in and sat down and he said, I'm not going to say anything all semester. And we came in together and he gave the books and, and the syllabus and he sat behind his desk for three hours all semester never said a word and he just sat there and and we just had to turn around and start talking about what we were reading and and I I said mm. and I was pastoring and trying to raise a family and trying to be a husband and a, and a father and and work and do the things of God and drive
drive over there and him stare at me like, and, and we had to do our own thing. And I said, but God, I am going to get an A in this class. And I did. I don't even know how or why or what I did, but I got an A. One professor walked over and walked in the classroom and went over and he hugged the wall. And while he was hugging the wall, he looked at us and said, is this wall really here? I said, oh God. Oh God. I'm going to tell you, Get something in your spirit. Get something in your heart. I'm declaring an excellency, a search for excellency in learning. I declare that we have prepared instructors, instructors who bring into that classroom a commanding presence, an anointing of God, a Holy Ghost infilling of the power of God. Walk into that classroom. I got my notes. I got my knowledge. And now I'm going to impart into these kids. And then I declare over these students a, a curiosity. I declare engagement students. Students are curious and study and do your homework and show up to class and pass your test. Get hungry for God's word, God's ways, God's methods. Brother Mangan was preaching years ago and he said right in the middle of his message, God don't anoint empty heads. I'm declaring over you an excellency in learning. <laughs> you got me all wound up. Sister Farrell said to me, she said, so are you just going to get up there and give a speech or are you going to preach? I declare over you students as you begin this new year that you experience the presence. This, this starts your spiritual emphasis week. I declare you experience the presence of God. That you meet every new challenge with an open heart and an open mind. And you develop lifelong friendships. Right out of the blue last night, I uh, got a text from... Uh, Brother Ron Patrick in Arkansas, he was our class president, lifelong friends. He just texted me out of the blue and said, hey, I just want you to know, Farrell, I was thinking about you and, and hope you're doing all right. My class president from, from, from 1985, and he's still a friend of mine and still thinking about me and still praying for me. I declare over you guys and you ladies, get a hold of this, get a hold of this, and build friendships and relationships. But whatever you do, desire an excellency. Search for an excellency in learning. Amen. The second Second point I want to make is a search for personal excellency. The Hebrew boys purposed that they would not defile themselves. Abel offered a more proper sacrifice. Joseph fled from sin. Abraham drove the birds off the sacrifice. I'm telling you, I declare over you this year and next year and however long God keeps you here, I declare over you that you guard your heart and guard your mind and keep yourself before the Lord. The popular culture says, follow your heart. The Word of God says, guard your heart. Get a, get a, a search in you for an excellency to guard the things that God placed in you. The Israelites believed the heart was the center of the whole person. That's why Solomon counseled in Proverbs and said, Son, attend to the words. Incline thine ear. Let them not depart. Keep them in thine heart. They are life to thee. Guard them with all, all diligence. Your heart will be assaulted this year, I can assure you. We, you, us, they... Them, all of us, are human. You will stumble. I was getting ready to go off to Bible college, and Brother James K. Stewart was a superintendent in Ohio at the time, and uh, he pulled me into his vehicle, campground, and he sat down and said, look, Todd, he said, uh, you're about to go off to ABI. He said, not everybody there is going to be, uh, he was right. He was, he was right. He was right. <laughs> oh, man. Man, alive. It was, it was, it was something. He, he laid it all out, you know, and he laid out there. Your heart's going to be assault. You'll stumble. You're going to lose your cool. Uh, uh, we, we had a hockey player there one year. And, uh, and kind of uh, another guy that wasn't a hockey player. He, he got mad and, and went and shoved a, 
an orange in the face of the hockey player. And the anointing of the Lord came on me. And I tackled the hockey player and prayed a spirit of peace and calm over, over him. You're going to fight with your roommate, your neighbor. You're going to fight with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and the whole school is going to get involved in it. It's a wonderful experience. <laughs> it is the most wonderful thing. Oh, you're going to be hungry and tired. At ABI, we went to classes in the morning, and then everybody went to work in the afternoon and the evening. There were no student loans. We worked to pay our tuition. We got a weekly bill in our mailbox for room and board. Uh, if you worked in the evenings, which I did, you didn't get supper, so they gave you a bag lunch. A bag lunch. It had a sandwich and an apple or an orange and a cookie. It was awful, and it was not nearly enough. I was working one night. I was so hungry, so tired. I was fighting with my girlfriend that God showed me was going to be my wife. <clears throat> I vacuumed floors four hours. <laughs> and, uh, and I was hungry. And the cookie was not enough. I was 19. I was working. And uh, no money. And there it stood, all lit up, the candy machine. There were M&Ms and chips and crackers. I shook that machine, and I called on God to let something fall. Nothing! <laughs> God had forsaken me. Talking about a search for personal excellency before God. But a search for excellency before each other. Grace, mercy, compassion with your fellow students. Given the benefit of the doubt. Titus said, show yourself a pattern of good works. Timothy, Paul wrote to Timothy, but be an example in your speech and in your conduct and love and faith and purity. Uh, Titus wrote, uh, devote yourself to good things. Uh, Peter wrote, be, be an example to others. As you excel in faith and speech and knowledge and your love, the, the word of the Lord said, excel in grace. Be gracious. I speak a spirit of graciousness over you. I don't declare these things because I had them or even had them mastered. I'm declaring from the wellspring of my mistakes and shortcomings. Philippians says, and this I pray you, that your love may abound yet more in knowledge and in judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent. I hope I'm not boring you. If I am, get used to it because you got three more months of it. <laughs> Number three, I declare over each of you an, a search for an excellency in spirit. First and foremost, I want to declare over you, we had some young people that came to ABI that didn't have the Holy Ghost. They just, they, they came. I declare over each and every one of you that you get filled with the anointing and the Holy Ghost. I declare over you anointed chapel services, anointed classrooms. I declare over you anointed prayer meetings in the dorm. I declare over you anointed times of fellowship. Get filled with the Spirit of God. Whatever you do, whatever you learn, whatever, whatever music and, or theology or whatever you get in you, you make sure that you walk out of that school having gotten a hold of the horns of the altar and said, God, whatever you do, fill me full of your spirit. Fill me full of your power. Fill me full of your anointing. Fill me full of, of your, your Holy Ghost, God. I want to be a tongue talker from the top of my head to the sole of my foot. I want to have the spirit of God saturate in every part of me. I declare that over every student, over every staff member, every instructor. I wouldn't leave here tonight. I know you want to get back to the dorm and get to connecting with your friends and run in the room and see who's got what and, and see who's got some food and, and steal stuff and all that stuff. I know you want to get back there and, and try on each other's clothes and all that. I want to, but I'm telling you, I wouldn't leave this. I wouldn't leave this 
service. I wouldn't walk out that door there isn't a hamburger in the world that's greater than making sure I'm leaving here tonight filled with the power and the anointing of God as I start my In fact, why don't you do it right now? Why don't you reach over and lay hands on your fellow classmate? Why don't you lay hands on one another? Oh, God, whatever you do in this service, fill me full, Lord, of the anointing of the Spirit of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Lord, let your glory fall. Let your anointing fall. Give me an excellency in spirit, God. I search for you, Lord. I'm hungry for you, God. I'm hungry for an outpouring, Lord. Let your anointing fall. Let your anointing fall. Let your anointing fall. Let the power of God fall on my heart, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 At the end of the day, what's going to make the difference is not what you know, but what's going to make the difference is that you have the anointing. I'm talking about yoke-breaking, power-breaking, spirit-breaking power of God in your life. It's not going to be, it's not going to be uh, the sermonizing. It's going to be like Brother Tracy said to us, thus saith the word of the Lord. Less preaching and, and less sermonizing and more the preaching of the anointed word. God. The spirit of God that flows out of you. I'm talking about some pulpit pounding. Oh, praise God. Brother Vincent walked into our pulpit there at convention and, and, and there was just a kind of glory. He hit that pulpit and the power of God fell and we had six people or seven people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost Sunday night. It wasn't that he didn't preach. He brought a spirit and a power that only comes from crawling into the prayer room and getting a hold of God saying touch me this spiritual week I don't know what's going to start in you but I'm praying tonight I'm declaring over you an excellency a search for an excellency of God's anointing whoa I feel like a wild man here tonight praise God Oh, Lord, pour out your spirit on our school. Pour out your spirit on these students. Pour out your spirit in the offices. Pour out your spirit in the cafeteria. How about it be some say you go down and Sister McNair's got that meal. I would drive across Canada for a meal with Sister McNair. I know where she learned to cook because I had some meals there, too. How about someday you go in there for lunch and they're slopping the peas out on your plate and all of a sudden the anointing of God comes into that cafeteria and you turn around and start praying for somebody or some student is not well and all of a sudden the the body just takes on and tackles that in prayer and God heals somebody and works a miracle and and lays somebody out in the spirit in the old cafeteria and then then when you're all done, go back and eat. You got to eat. You got to eat. The the body, the mind can't work if the body don't have fuel. So you got to eat. Where'd that come from? I'm telling you. Anyway, you get the point. Brother Tracy, God bless you for being here. This was all here before I knew you. Brother Tracy challenged us to seek the Savior. Seek the Savior along with all your learning and along with all your excellency and personal uh, personal excellency. Whatever you do, seek the Savior. Seek the Savior. Seek the Savior. Make it a search before I leave the halls of NCC. I'm going to go out of here. I'm going to have some knowledge and all those things. But one thing I'm going to go out of, I'm going to go out of here in the anointing and in the power and in the spirit of Almighty God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, it was said of Daniel that he had an excellent spirit. So not only do we need to be anointed with the Spirit of God, we also need to have an excellent spirit within us. 
king was, Belshazzar was having a party and brought the vessels from the temple. And let's start partying with the vessels of the temple. And they did. And, 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 a, and a hand appeared and began to etch some things on the wall. It was so fearful that the king's countenance changed. His thoughts troubled him. His, the joints in his hips gave way. His knees started knocking together. And they needed somebody to interpret the dream. And, and, and the king's wife said, there is a man in the kingdom that has an excellent spirit. I'm going to challenge you and declare over you a search for excellency in the spirit of God, but also an excellency in your spirit. Daniel 6 and 3 says Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and all the others because he had an excellent spirit. And this anointing or this excellent spirit. Now, I'm going to get very transparent here for the next few minutes and then we're going to close. This this. This excellent spirit that I'm talking about comes at the cost of brokenness. Iron sharpens iron. Brother Scott Graham preached here a few years ago at the camp meeting about the sand in your shoe. The Bible talks about thorns in the flesh, the things that keep you off balance, and you have to lean on the Lord. I'm talking about the unreasonable rules, the unreasonable workload, the unreasonable staff, the unreasonable peers. It's the crushing. I shouldn't point at you, should I? It's the crushing. Recently read this on social media. Uh, your calling is going to crush you. If you're called to mend the brokenhearted, you're going to wrestle with brokenheartedness. If you're called to prophesy, you're going to struggle to control your mouth. If you're called to lay on hands, you'll battle spiritual viruses. If you're called to preach and teach the gospel, you'll be sifted for wisdom that anoints your message. If you are called to empower... Your self-esteem will be attacked. Your successes will be hard fought. Your calling will call, come with ups and, and downs and cups and thorns and siftings that are necessary for your mantle to be authentic and humble and powerful. Your crushing will not be easy. Your assignment is not easy. Your oil is not cheap. It's not cheap. Because you're searching for excellency. In your calling. I declare a prayer space in NCC that becomes the place where you search for excellency in spirit. This is a picture of Apostolic Bible Church in St. Paul, Minnesota. The altar space. It hasn't changed since I left there. Over there underneath that exercise is a set of steps that go through a door that leads to the back of the platform. Those steps. Those steps. Those steps became my personal prayer space for three years. That is where I searched many times for excellency in spirit. On those steps through, on those steps I prayed through on my bad attitudes, my bad spirits, on those steps I prayed through my hurts, on those steps I prayed through on my discouragements, on those steps I prayed through on who and what I should marry. You see, the word of the Lord says... In all thy ways, acknowledge him first. Don't, don't just jump and go and then expect God. Okay, God, I'm over here. No, God says acknowledge him first. And then he will direct. And it was on those, it was on those steps over there. Those steps that became my prayer space. My search for excellently took me from that goofy football player. And the iron began to grind away at my spirit and my attitude. But on those steps, I formed habits that have sustained me all these years. When I have fallen my deepest or my darkest, when I have gotten sideways, I have returned to my search and sought God to renew a right spirit within me. This search for excellency is a search for the spirit of Christ to be formed in us. It comes through prayer Repentance, submission, dependence, release, trust, and a struggle with your spirit and a surrender to God's spirit. A search for excellency in spirit is embodied in what Christianity has labeled the Lord's Prayer, our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. 
As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, for I is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Tonight I am blessed beyond words. I'm a well person at the moment. <laughs> I'll talk to you after the service and tell you how things are going. But I have been broken, and I will continue to be broken. I made a comment today in jest, and conviction ripped through my heart. I had to go and apologize. You know, never, it never stops. You're human. I have had my heart broken. I've had my health broken. I've had my dreams broken. <laughs> a little while ago, a new pastor was moving to our community, and they put up on Facebook. They were so excited. They were so excited to come. And they, we, my wife and I were watching the video on Facebook, and she looked over at me and said, They have dreams! <laughs> I've, had, I've had my dreams broken. I've had my mind broken. I've been tempted and tried. I've been humiliated. One guy in a public meeting compared my ministry style to that of Jim Jones. You know Jim Jones. He was a guy who led over 900 people to drink pools and poison Kool-Aid. In a public meeting, he compared me to Jim Jones. And while he was ranting against me, all I could think of was, I can't get people to come to Bible study, let alone drink poison Kool-Aid. Uh, I've been financially broken. In a church I pastored during my ministry, I had a board member call me out for not dressing nice. His words were that I dressed disgraceful, but I was, I was poor. I didn't have money to buy a suit. I didn't have nice suits. I was so poor that one time a missionary came by our church, and after he left, he sent me a brand new pair of shoes in the mail. I thought I'd won the lottery. But I kept searching for excellence. I'm still searching for excellency tonight. I'm still pressing to learn and be a better person, to be a man of God, to be a Christian, to be a dad, a husband, a pastor. It never ends. You might as well develop the habits right now because it never ends. You're always searching to be a man after God's own heart. The reason I want to give is because I've been in need. I want to see you healed because I've been sick. Why do I want preachers and saints restored? Because I've fallen short. Why do I want the battled, the embattled refreshed? Because I have been wounded in war. Why do I want individuals to succeed? Is because I have failed. Why do I work to heal marriages? Is because I know the times I should have been a better husband. Why do I want people to be happy and uplifted? Why do I want people to laugh? It's because I have been sad and low and cried tears. There's a lot that goes on behind this smile. Oh God, in this service tonight, I declare... A search for excellency over our schools. An excellent spirit is your money hole. It's your 10x. It's not formed by the hand clap or the pat on the back. It's formed by the iron. It's formed by the opposition, the pruning. In conclusion, Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, it is searching for whatever is true, whatever is noble, what is right, pure, lovely, whatever is admirable. The reason we search for excellency is because we are ambassadors of Christ. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are God's own possession. Brother Lewis's name is on that building over there. You're going to walk through those doors. You're going to walk through those doors and you're going to start your learning journey. He didn't start out with his name on buildings. He says, it's one brick a day. Brother Lewis has shared with me many times how in his first year of Bible school at UPBI, 1960, Brother Calvin Prosser preached to him and his students, fellow students, and challenged them with the phrase, what do ye more than others? It became a motivating force in Brother Lewis's life and ministry all through Bible school. It pushed him toward a search for excellency. He has broken attendance records, kept his life clean. Many may not know this, but Brother Lewis has a master's degree in theology. He wrote his master's thesis out by hand. He had moments of frustration as a pastor when, uh, when things weren't going as planned. He'd get in his car. He would, he would put preaching cassettes in his car. And while he was driving up and down those roads visiting, he was listening to preacher. I, go, I want to be a better preacher. I want to be a better preacher. He would read the dictionary and memorize new words to increase his vocabulary. He served in leadership roles. 
he, tur- he prayed in the stress and pressure at times. His body would have a physiological response to the challenge and those pressures. And it, it, he, he would just pour it out on the altar. He would just pour it out on the altar. What are you doing, Brother Lewis? I'm searching for excellency. The mission statement for NCC reads, Northeast Christian College exists to enlist and educate students for ministry, to perfect, edify, and unite that ministry for revival, world evangelism, and discipleship. Would you stand with me? It doesn't matter if God has called you to NCC or if you're here trying to find yourself. (laughs) I'm here trying to find myself. Whatever reason you're here, you're trying to escape jail or whatever, I don't know. Whatever reason you're here, walk out of this place tonight pledging to search for excellency. You're paying the money, you're putting in the time, you might as well make it count. Have fun, search for, search for mates, fall in love, fall out of love, fall back in love. I think Sister Farrell and I broke up five times. I, but once the dorm got involved, we got back together. Because One night I had five guys in my dorm room. You, you got to work this out. It's going to be all right. You gotta work this out. I ran right out and picked up the phone and put the quarter in and called her. And said, let's, 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 let's get, it's God's will. They, they've told me it's God's will. Let's get back together. Yes, let's get back together. I'm so sorry. And I, she gave me back the teddy bear and I, because I... She sprayed, sprayed perfume all over it. I, it was beautiful. <laughs> I want you to go to the dorms and laugh and hang out and talk and cry and pray for each other. But above all else, draw some lines, guard your heart, and form some habits of excellency that your faith and calling will stand, as Paul wrote, in the power of God. So tonight, I have declared over you a search for excellency in learning, in you as a person, and in spirit. And now, I place it in your hands. I'm going to get in my vehicle and drive back to Perth. Tomorrow morning, I'm just going to hit the office and read my Bible, head out in the altar, Get on my face. Say, God, anoint me today. Lead me to a hurting heart. Lead me to an unsaved soul. Help me be excellent, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to be excellent for you, Lord. Just want to be excellent for you. Amen. All right, that's it. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. I'm all out of slides, so i got to stop. <laughs> Thank you for letting me preach, Bible school board and staff. Thank you for letting me be myself and empty my heart. How about it? Well, somebody, before you go and eat, how many of you will come to this altar? And begin tonight your search for excellency. Do I got any parents, grandparents, pastors, preachers that will come and stand behind these students and put a prayer hedge over them? Put a prayer hedge over them. Help them. Cover them. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next week in class where you're going to learn about human behavior. But tonight, start your search for excellency.